Okay, so let's run through what's included in the kit. We have a 50 gallon per day membrane, two housing spanners, one membrane housing spanner, and one filter housing spanner. We have a tank connector, a tap connector, a mains connection kit, your bobble foot tap with all the relevant fittings, a drain clamp with the self adhesive pad, some PTFE tape, and also five meters of tubing. Included is an instruction manual, which has photos and diagrams to help you through the installation. Okay, so the tools that you'll need for this installation are a drill, a Phillips head screwdriver, an adjustable wrench, three drill bits, one one eighth, which is optional for the guidance for the drain line hole, a quarter inch drill bit for the drain line hole, and a half inch drill bit for the tap. Finally, there is a tube cutter, or you can use a straight razor if you don't have access to one. When installing the tap, remove the two nuts from the shank. Start by peeling the plastic cover off the metal base plate and put this on first. Secondly, you want to add the rubber washer. You can now put this in your drilled hole On the underside of the tap, you want to add the plastic washer first. The lock nut second. And the hex nut third. Hand tighten the nut to the top and then secure with the adjustable wrench. You then want to add the supplied white tap connector to the bottom of the threaded shank. Now we're going to look at the mains connection kit. First, start by PTFE taping your isolation valve. You want to apply around 10 to 15 wraps. Take your Borlo fix valve and unscrew one side. Take the centerpiece of the mains connection kit and be sure the black o-ring is in place. Screw these two pieces together. Next, take the white or black push fit fitting and secure to the other side. Finally, screw the isolation tap into the top of the main body. The PTFE tape will prevent any leaks. So now we're going to install the mains connection kit to our copper pipe. First take your copper pipe and thread the Borlo fix nut. Connect the pipe to the baller fix and hand tighten. You then want to tighten this with a wrench to secure the connection. On the other side, using the push fit fitting, push the copper piping into place and pull to make sure it's secure. Locate where your mains connection kit will go in relation to your system Measure the length of tubing required and cut accordingly. 
when connecting your tubing to your isolation valve, push the tubing over the spigot and then tighten the nut over the threads. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at the three pre-filters in the RO system. First, we have a five micron sediment filter. This will catch any particles five micron or larger. Secondly, we have a GAC filter. This is an activated carbon filter that will remove chlorine and other VOCs from the water. Finally, we have a five micron CTO carbon block. This will also remove chlorine and VOCs from the water. Just to reiterate, we want the sediment filter first, GAC filter second, and carbon block third. Before installing your filter bowls, please be sure to check that the black O-ring is sitting inside the RO bowl. Screw the bowls on hand tight. and then secure with the filter housing spanner provided. Determine the location for your drain clamp based on your plumbing layout. The drain should be installed above the trap on either the horizontal or vertical tailpiece. It should be mounted as low as possible to avoid draining noise. You can use an optional 1 8 drill bit to make a guidance hole and then use a quarter inch drill bit to create your drain line hole. Taking the side of the drain clamp with the quick connect fitting, stick the self adhesive sponge to the inside of the drain clamp or on the drain itself. Place one half of the plastic clamp on either side of the drain pipe Align the hole on the drain clamp with the drilled hole. A drill bit or Phillips head screwdriver is the best to use for this. Place one half of the plastic clamp on either side of the drain pipe and clamp loosely using the nuts and bolts included. Avoid over tightening the clamp. Okay, so let's take a look around the system. We have the red stopper for our inlet, the blue stopper, which will connect to our tap, the yellow stopper, which will connect to our tank, and the black stopper, which will connect to our waistline. Other parts of the system to note are the L1 valve or the flush valve, the auto shut off valve, which is the brains of the system, and finally your pressure gauge. If you already have a pre existing ball fix valve, you can purchase a three quarter to quarter inch tap adapter from us at www.finerfilters.co.uk. This saves you using the standard installation kit and is much, much easier to install. Be sure that the valve is in the off position before installing. To connect your RO system to the mains, first remove the red stopper, install your pre-cut tubing, then secure the connection with your collar clips. Next, for the drain line installation, remove the black stopper from the back of the RO system. Then, take your pre-cut tubing and push this into the drain clamp. You should feel the tubing pass through into the drilled hole. Then, connect the other side to the RO system drain line. When installing the tank, remove the yellow stopper
Next, take the red plastic cap off the tank and install the tank valve. Then measure the distance between the two and cut tubing to length. When it comes to flushing the system through, please be sure that your tank valve is closed. When the valve is going with the direction of flow, this means it's open as shown. Finally, for the tap connection, remove the blue stopper from the remineralization filter. When connecting your system to your tap, please measure the length of tubing required Cut. and install accordingly. Please make sure all connections made up until now have been secured with collet clips. Okay, so now we have the system installed, we're going to take a look at how to actually flush the RO system. First, we're going to flush the pre-filters before the membrane is added to the unit. First, you need to make sure the valve on the storage tank is in the off position. Next, you want to turn on the mains water supply by putting the isolator tap in the on position. You then want to open the faucet and let the water run for approximately 5 minutes or until the water runs clear. The reason why we flush the RO pre-filters through before we add the membrane is so that the loose carbon fines which are found inside the GAC and carbon block filter don't travel through to the membrane housing and clog the membrane. After we've completed the first system flush, we now need to add the membrane to the system. To do this, you want to unclip the top filter from the membrane housing. Then remove the membrane housing from the clips attached to the bracket. Remove the collet clip, depress the collet and pull the tubing to release it from the membrane housing cap. If the membrane housing is screwed on too tightly, use the membrane housing spanner provided to loosen. When you remove the membrane housing cap, please check that the black o-ring is on the outside of the membrane housing body and not on the inside of the membrane housing cap. This will prevent any leaks. Remove the 50 gallon per day membrane from the sealed bag and when installing the membrane we want to make sure that we are installing it double o-ring side first. The thicker black o-ring on the body of the membrane will secure it in place. Once again be sure that the black o-ring is on the outside of the membrane housing body and replace the end cap. Hand tighten and secure with the membrane spanner. Be sure this connection is tight to prevent any leaks. Finally, reconnect tubing. and replace collet clips.
Once all the filters and the system has been replaced, you are now ready for your second system flush. Still leaving the tank valve closed, turn the L1 valve to the open position. Turn on the water by putting the isolator tap to the on position. Open the faucet and then let the water run for approximately 5 minutes. Once the membrane has been fully saturated and water is flowing from the faucet, you want to close the L1 valve and open your tank valve. Then the system will start to fill the tank. Once the tank has been filled and emptied twice, the water will then be suitable to drink.